Gaussian's plots are now in Corona 14. Gaussian's plotting is a rendering technique that allows for fast, highly detailed, natural looking environments. They provide real-time speed and photorealism. Now drop a scanned environment into your scene and navigate your camera around with no lag. And when you press render, the performance is nothing short of incredible. Now let's jump to post shot to generate our own splat scene. For this example, I will be using a sequence of images capturing the beautiful Prague Old Town. We begin the process by selecting the use best images and reducing the max images count to around 150. Additionally, we will increase both max plat count and the stop number, ensuring that we capture the finest details necessary for a high quality Gaussian splat output. Our scene is now prepared, so let's proceed with exporting only the splats. To load the scene into 3ds Max, the process is as follows. Go to Geometry, choose Corona and then select Corona Gaussian Splats. After drawing the Gaussian Splats in the scene, simply load in the file we exported from PostShot. The axis orientation can vary, so Corona provides several options to easily flip and correct it. We need to enlarge the Splats to achieve the proper scale within the scene and additionally, for better visual representation within the viewport, I will increase the point cloud number to 10 for better clarity. We can now launch the Corona Interactive Rendering to preview the scene. Just a quick heads up, the project is set up to use the Gamma workflow. The splats are a little bit dark. This visual appearance is a result of the ACES OT or the ACES output transform clamping any values higher than 1 and thus preventing the full display of our splats high dynamic range. Once deactivated, we see that we achieve our desired result and we can simply remove this element as it will be no longer needed for our setup. Now that our environment is correctly configured, let's proceed to integrate our 3D object with the Gaussian splat. Let's select our pre-made object, which will act as a slicer after we create a slicer material. Within the settings, ensure you choose the include option and then add the Gaussian splats we loaded earlier. This way, we will limit our slicer to only affect the splats. I'm assigning the material to our object and let's have a look in the interactive rendering. Now that a portion of the trees has been sliced, creating a flat surface for us, we can turn on our building layer. As you can see, our building is clearly visible even though the scene currently has no active lights. This is due to the baked in lighting within the Gaussian splats. To properly illuminate our 3D model, Let's add a Corona Sun by simply dragging and adjusting the height. Also, be sure to add a Corona Sky environment from the Modify tab to our environment settings. It appears our scene is too bright and attempting to fix this by lowering the exposure in the VFB causes the Gaussian splats to become too dark. Fortunately, the solution is simple. Uncheck the relevant options in the shading properties of the Gaussian splats. This crucial step will prevent the splats from being affected by the VFB's tone mapping, maintaining their correct brightness while we can still adjust the scene's exposure. Now our environment and objects are matching correctly. Corona provides separate tone mapping controls for your splats, allowing you to fine-tune their appearance. You can achieve custom looks by applying lookup tables or by using color correction tools such as tint adjustments, contrast modifications, brightness controls, or color saturation shifts. We will hold off on applying any tone mapping for now. Our next crucial step is to reintroduce some greenery. I will add vegetation from Chaos Cosmos, specifically starting with this fill the home tree and carefully placing these elements around the building to ensure our 3D objects blend seamlessly with the Gaussian splats. Now let's turn on the layer containing the extra trees and bushes that were imported previously. These objects are included specifically to add more detail and life, making our building feel like a truly livable and integrated place within the environment. The scene looks great with this added greenery, but we have one more step to truly level up the result. I will start by drawing a plane and fitting it directly beneath our building to act as a ground plane. Now let's duplicate this plane and move the copy into position so it simulates the immediate background wall. By placing this second plane vertically behind the building, 
we create a necessary surface to capture the shadows that are being cast. After selecting both the ground and the wall planes, we will assign a shadow catcher material to them. Now let's switch to a more compelling viewing angle and open the Corona Interactive Render to check out the results live. The addition of the shadow catchers significantly improved the blending process of our building into the environment. As a last touch, we are going to set up an animation. Start by selecting Create Corona Camera from View and simply activate the Auto Key feature so we can add keyframes as we go. Next, let's just find a better point of view for our end frame. With Gaussian Splats, you can easily add realistic reflections and shadows directly into your scene, dramatically speeding up your workflow. 